The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Talkin' Cowboys. Steve. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. First down. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. And now, your hosts, Isaiah Stanback, Patrick Walker, Rob Phillips, and Kyle Yeomans. It is a wonderful Wednesday edition of Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company from the star in Frisco in the SWBC studios. Welcome in, everybody. Hello. Cowboys Nation, Howdy. Patrick Howdy. Walker, Howdy. Isaiah Stanback, Rob mm-hmm. Phillips, Chris mm-hmm. Beam. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Gentlemen, how are we doing here on this Wednesday? Fantabulous. Fantastic. Lovely, 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 lovely. Yeah. Lovely. What about you, Pat? Well, we have some uh, <laughs> bittersweet news coming here shortly. Yeah, we'll so. talk about it here in a little bit. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll get to gotta it. Got to get the news and it's notes yet. first. Yeah, we've got to get. We've got to talk a little bit of football. But there is a major, it's always a big segment for me. Major <laughs> announcement coming up here in the next couple minutes. So be sure to stay tuned. But uh, we are going to preview the Cowboys defense versus the Lions offense today. Lions come in with some pretty good numbers behind Jared Goff and company, but. We'll see if the Cowboys can unmask what is either real and or fake about that Lions offense at some point in the show. But, uh, Patrick, like you alluded to it, let's get to news and notes here from Rob Phillips to get things started, as we all normally do. A little bit of a different schedule today for the Cowboys. Yeah, it sounds like they're going to do – they haven't officially announced it, but it's it's going to be like it was coming off the Giants game uh, where Monday night they Mike pushed everything back on a Wednesday. So try to just – push it back as much as possible to get them on the field in the afternoon. Probably do something fairly light. I would think more like jog-through style. And uh, so we'll probably talk to the players a little earlier today. That's what they did after the Giants. That's what they're going to do after Philly. And uh, and they're facing a Lions team that's had some time to rest. Yeah, they had, a, had a bye week and, and to regroup after getting shut out by the New England Patriots. And I thought this was interesting, just – a little note stat, Kyle, that maybe if you'd like to use on big facts. Ah. Oh, you're probably already done with that. I'm not. So, right yeah, now. I would actually love to use that, <laughs> honestly. Heading into uh, the, the Pats game that they lost, they were averaging 35 points mm. a game and allowing 35.3 points per game. Mm. That combined 281 points and points allowed were the most by any team in the first four games of a season in NFL history. Wow. So, a uh, little Jekyll Hyde there. So, you know who we, that reminds me of? What's that? The Cowboys circa 2020, 2019, where it's just like they were basically just racking up points, but their Can defense was allowing <clears throat> like one point more than the offense was gaining. That's right. And that's why yeah. they kept losing games. That's right. Yeah. And uh, so, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what that does for the matchups as far as practice goes. Dak's going to be out there. Uh, if, as long as he was cleared, and that was the expectation, according to Mike McCarthy, that he's going to have a full practice, and uh, and we'll see how that goes. Because if if Sunday's pregame workout was any indication, he's ready to go for Sunday. I think. Mm. So that's that's the the feeling around camp is it's not even a question, or is there a question? Mike McCarthy kind of left it up to interpretation on Monday. I, I had a couple people hit me up and ask me, is Dak ready to go? Like, is this a le- legitimate thing? Or is he just playing a little games gamesmanship I, at the same yeah, time? Yeah, thanks, because I probably should have meant that. Like, and, and, and Isaiah could speak to this, having played the position. I think physically with the finger, the thumb, he's ready. He can throw it. He can take snaps. We saw it pregame. It's the timing. And that, that's what McCarthy left open was – How's he, how's, he, how's he doing from a timing standpoint running the offense? He hasn't done any of that since week one. Yeah, I think we've mentioned it here on the show before in terms of his cadence with the offensive line, making sure they're in sync with him. Everybody's like, well, he's quarterback, he's QB1. Yeah, but he's been out a while. So uh, he, they've kind of become, you know, become acclimated to Cooper Rush's cadence. So that's one thing. The communication's another thing. Making sure that you know the velocity on the ball, the, the receivers are used to it because if you're not used to the same velocity, then, then you're more prone to tip balls. You're more prone to balls coming, you know, going through your hands, all those type of things, right? So those are the little intricacies that people don't really think about when they think about a quarterback coming back into the fold, regardless of what his his depth was on the on the chart. Uh, but, you know, I think things will be fine. You know, with a week of practice, I think they'll have more than enough time to get him ready and calibrated uh, with these guys. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to what Mike McCarthy was saying. Uh, it's timing. 
Uh, you know, obviously the, the cadence plays into it as well. But McCarthy wanted to get some throwing, some real, real throwing going on as effective yesterday, which would have been Tuesday, to start working on the timing with the offense. And then today he's looking to ramp it up to what he said on Monday would be a full workload of throws. So um, as long as there are no setbacks and Dak Prescott is a full participant today, which is more of a walkthrough, jog through, um, but most certainly tomorrow, which is the biggest day, pr- biggest practice day of the week on Thursday. And then Friday will be a little bit of a cool down, but still get some work in. Uh, all signs are go as we have this conversation. So as long as there's no weird swelling that pops up or soreness or anything like that, uh, I anticipate fully that Dak Prescott is on the field for the Detroit Lions. You kind of feel the same way? Same. Yeah. Same. I think I wonder, I, I kind of wonder if they've been circling this one all along. Yeah. Because like, and they, they haven't told us that, and I don't know that for sure, but I think Monday was exactly six weeks. Mm-hmm. Since the cert, maybe five or six weeks, and so, um, and they've been calculated style ramping him up. Like that, the plan was get him in a little practice last week, and then do this workout. And he was never going to play against uh, uh, the Eagles, but but now full week, and then let's go. That I think that seems right on course. What's the strategy to push him practice back? Is it just long trip? Want to gain some extra time off? Or like what? What is that? Yeah, just. Uh, Really push back the day a little bit, just because gotcha. I, I think they're not going to get on the field till right. late in the afternoon. Yeah, it'll be afternoon. Yeah, McCarthy's not even speaking until three o'clock. So yeah. I mean, it's it's basically mm. just like you said, it's staggering. They got in late uh, or early uh, Monday morning. You did too. Four, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick didn't get any extra time off. Well, you know, this is we pushed the, the show back an hour, but that's about it. Yeah, well, well we know, always do. That. You grind, <laughs> you grind through. So yeah, it's just it's just them staggering. Um, gotcha. Had they. Had it been a midday game and, you know, the team had gotten in earlier um, or late Sunday evening as opposed to – then it. he it likely would not have changed. Yeah. So he was just yeah. adjusting based upon what uh, what they're coming off of on Sunday. So we got one last news and note to hit, and this is probably the biggest one of them all, Rob. Nah, it's mm. not the biggest one. It's the biggest oh, one. It's definitely all. the biggest it's, one. It's, it's, um, uh, it's a big one. You know, I haven't wanted to bring this up, and I, I – I, I've assumed I'm going to get emotional, but I've got Isaiah next to me, and <laughs> he's just going to make me laugh, which is good. Which is good. Um, yeah, this is my last show. This is my last day mm. at the Cowboys. Um, and I, there's people out there, who, fans out there that, uh, oh, he left once already. He's coming back. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be back. He'll be back. But, no, I, I am, I'm taking another opportunity um, outside of sports. It's a, it's a chance to – you know, grow as a leader, I think, and take on a leadership mm. opportunity, which I'm excited about. And uh, there's great people here that have taught me that and how to how to do that. You know, Derek and Nick and Scott and so many others. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But it was a it's a tough decision um, because of the personal side of this place. Mm. Like, be, and I told Nick and Derek this, all the opportunities I've gotten here, are, that's great. This show has been an absolute blast. I love you guys. It's been so much fun. Chris, too. Heck, when we started this in two, you know, three years ago, yeah. um, doing deep blues and things like it's great opportunities, but it's the personal support that we have here that it ma- made this decision so tough because, um, you know, it's been a – I'll pull – real quick, I'm just going to pull back the curtain a little bit. For the last couple years, and it's been a couple tough years for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. For me personally and our, you know, my family, it's been a, a, a tough couple years. We've, we've lost some family members. Um, I had a tough year this year up until about June personally with some health stuff that I'm good now. But um, and I've heard I've seen some comments. People notice the weight loss and they probably, you know, that's a, that was a thing. Uh, but I'm, I'm good now. But the support that I got from everybody, Derek and Nick, that means everything. That's why this is like home to me. And that's why this is hard to do. But um, I just want to thank everybody out there too because um doing this job it's a unique job that we have where this is your office but there's thousands of people that are watching you do your office (laughs) in your cube watching listening writing and you guys have made me better by just being present and and making me have pride in what i do and i would anyway but but to another level so thank you everybody out there and thank you guys because this has been an absolute blast it really has been and when the news dropped to us uh, a little bit earlier, I mean, it was like a like a brick was dropped. I mean, Rob is the glue guy of this mm-hmm. entire department. That's if, a fact. I mean, he has been here 
How long have you been here? I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I blacked out halfway through. I've, I've lost track. I don't think HR knows. I, I did, they tried to add it up. I think this, this is my 17th season off and on helping out, and I started Jeez. in 03 as an intern, oh, and, and Mickey hired me. Uh, that's that's is it that for me. That's, Mickey, uh, Mickey hired so you? Wild. Mickey hired me when I was still in college in 03. And it, Mickey and Derek, I, I first interviewed with Mickey, okay. and Derek hired me with Mickey and Jerry Jr. And uh, and I, I I came back after college, and was here for a few years. Came back, um, Nick hired me again with Derek. I'm just eternally grateful to them. Um, so this is you know this has been my life, uh, basically most of my adult life. But it's hard leaving you guys in the middle of the season, and I feel bad about that. I really do. But I feel good leaving because I think we have such a great team. I know we have such a great team. And No C has, has just shown up and killed it and is going to continue to kill it. And we have such a great new group of, of, group of, of new teammates coming in with, with people like Chris who have been here forever. It's a great yeah. group. And we do. I hope you guys appreciate what everybody does here because in front of the camera, behind the scenes, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of high-quality work. So. I, I just want to personally uh... – Thank you isn't sufficient. Um, I wish there were more profound words that I could use to kind of evoke what I feel. Um, coming into the, the organization and, and the fashion in which uh, it had to occur, training camp, hit the ground running, and then you know the behind the scenes. You talk about the behind the scenes, and there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that fans just aren't privy to. And, you know, for better or for worse, it doesn't matter. It, it behind the scenes happen so that what you see in front of the curtain can continue to go on. Um, but in order to hit the ground running, it it took, you know, Derek and Nick and most especially Rob just open arms and Kyle and Isaiah and just you guys just completely embracing and saying, hey, okay, you know, not looking at me as, hey, here's the here's the new guy coming in. It was more so, hey, what do you need? What do you need? What can, you know, we help out with? And I can't express how helpful that was in in transitioning me over to the organization um and just from training camp forward like the the instant brotherhood it's not even a friendship the instant brotherhood yeah. that you and I struck up yep. uh and the the talks that we've had behind the scenes both you know professional and personal family from father to father and and husband to husband and those kinds of conversations um you will and I know everybody shares the sentiment and I know they feel it more deeply than I do because they've been, you know, they've had the benefit of being blessed with your presence uh, longer than I have, but I can't fathom how much they'll miss you considering weighing it against how much I'll miss you having <laughs> only been in your company for about three or four months. So Man, you, you are um, a light. So mm. don't feel badly about moving on to uh, another success because you you you'll knock it out the park as you always do. Well, as I appreciate that. I love you guys, and I'm I'm y'all's biggest fan. Like I can't wait to see what's next for you. No, see, you guys. You're not getting net, rid of me. network <laughs> TV is coming and national rate. Whatever you guys want to do, you guys are going to be able to do. And and no, is going to just keep growing too. And and I I I can't wait to see what's next for all you guys. You're Chris not getting too. rid of me. <laughs> it's not going I, I anywhere anytime in your, soon. In your inbox. So <laughs> deal with it. Well, that's the thing too is is we're your biggest fan, yeah, and fact. and we've been a biggest fan of you through the through the struggles, through the ups, through the downs over these last couple of years, and we see how much your family means to you, yep. and and their time and their company means to you, and we are your biggest cheerleaders for you to take this step. Um, and it, it is. It's emotional for us. It's sad for us because we love having you in studio and we ha love having you as a part of the show. But, man, the, the decision that you're making here is is a home run, like like Nosey just said. It's bottom of the ninth, two outs, bases loaded, and clutch hit, and you just put it over the, the – put it in the upper deck. Uh, and, and that's going to be so much fun for you and, and for the family. And I can't wait to, to see how, how you guys continue to grow. Because like you know, C said, you're, you're not getting rid of us anytime soon. At all. As a matter <laughs> um, of fact. I want a wedding invite. I call oh, you've got one already. Oh, that's right. That's that's right. Oh, my gosh. What oh, is this? Man, what we got? What we got? Oh, is this banana nut bread? <laughs> it's a banana nut bread. <laughs>
Ah, I see what this is. As promised. How about that? As yes. promised. Yes. It, this is a good. This is good timing. Yes. As promised. How about that? Mm. Tiger, tiger, tiger milk. milk. Mm. Never forget the tiger oh, milk. Oh, won't. Never forget the tiger <laughs> milk. I can't wait to see an Instagram story of Rob and Emmy, and it's just going to be Rob on the couch with a tiger, tiger milk, milk shirt on. This might be the Halloween, Halloween is around the corner. <laughs> this might be the Halloween costume. You Thank you, oh, no seat. Thank you, man. My pleasure, man. Oh. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Every time you put that on, <laughs> it's a brotherhood. These are soft. It's a brotherhood. Soft they and are. supple. Goodness yeah, gracious. That's supple. a nice that's a Like nice shirt. a lady. Mm-hmm. Nah. nah, man. Uh, Rappi, you already know. You're going to be dearly missed, man. We, um... We collab for the last few years. I, I was a newbie, just like just like you were. I was new to the whole industry, though. Oh. Uh, so mm. obviously coming in, um, being the being the young buck, not as young as Kyle was, but but Kyle had a lot <laughs> more experience than I did. <laughs> I Damn you! <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, coming in and being able to have conversations and learn. I'm I'm one of those people who's kind of like a sponge. I just sit back and kind of just absorbed information and wisdom from those around me. So I necessarily haven't talked to you about a lot of the things that I've that I've witnessed, but I've uh, I have taken on a lot of the professionalism that you've had, a lot of the things that you showed and exerted, your your research, your studying, your preparation, all those things are things that I sit back on and, and I'm, when I'm sitting at my computer doing my homework, I think about what Rob P. Island would do. So mm-hmm. um, we talk about you a lot, even in the pregame shows, you yeah. know, when you're on the sideline reporting. So we talk about how we're going to miss that. You know, Barry Church is in, in here right now, Big Nate. But we love we love talking about Rob P. All over there on the sideline, be geared up. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, no, you're definitely going to be missed, man. But, you know, as a father, as a, somebody who has a fam, I, I get it. I totally yeah. get it and I respect it. Hard decisions have to be made all the time. And – I know you're passionate about sports. I know that you're passionate about the Cowboys. Uh, you've dedicated a lot of your time, a lot of your life to it. Um, you poured your heart into your your craft, and fans have benefited from it. Uh, so not only are we going to miss you, but I know the fans are going to miss you and your insight um, in terms of them looking forward to seeing what you're putting out all the time. But, uh, you know, we love you, man. Anybody ever run up on you, you know, we got your back mm. like Jansport. So. Darn right. Uh, <laughs> Believe it. <laughs> and little mama, got a, she got uncles for life. So you're, yep. you're good to go there, too. Thank you. Thank you, yep. man. Love you guys. Uh, um, with that, let's talk Lions. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Before I get uh, emotional. When, when, don't worry, you're I not done just I need to hear the story yeah, about how it. interviewing with Mickey went. Yeah, I, 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 need, I, wanna, I need to know that story. I want to hear the origin time. story. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> or, this is good. Everybody loves a good origin story. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. That's we're going to take question he had. We'll take our first break. When we come back, we are going to talk some football for a little bit, and then we'll get back to Rob Phillips to, to cap things off here on his final show. Talking Cowboys presented by Black Rifle Coffee continues in a moment. When you build, you start with a foundation, and home ownership is a foundation of a stable future. The Bank of America Community Home Ownership Commitment has helped over 34,000 people lay the groundwork so far. With up to $10,000 towards your down payment, or 3% of the purchase price, whichever is less, the satisfaction of owning your own place can become a reality. Visit bankofamerica.com slash homeowner to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America N.A. Equal housing lender. Credit and collateral is subject to approval. Restrictions apply. This is not a commitment to lend. Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Little Sweet says head on home. Dr. Pepper is on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now, Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. <laughs> but the good news is, Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Are you ready to take coffee off your grocery list forever? Black Rifle Coffee Club is here to help. As a coffee club member, you'll get your favorite coffees roasted, packaged, and shipped to your door free of charge on your preferred schedule. Set it, forget it, and never run low on coffee again. Members also get exclusive deals on coffee, products, and discounts from partner brands. Ease your mind and let Black Rifle worry about your coffee supply. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com to join the coffee club today. Back to Talking Cowboys. (laughs) 
Back here on Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. You know what goes great with Black Rifle Coffee, gentlemen? <laughs> What's that, Kyle? Live music. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one's way better, oh, right? Okay. Head Forcing. to the Star in Frisco on Wednesday, October 26, for a brand new monthly concert series, "Sounds of the Star," featuring spectacular Southern soul band Prophets and Outlaws. The concert kicks off at seven and is free and open to the public. For more information, you can visit thestarinfrisco.com. Back here on Talking Cowboys, it's not. Miller Lite and Black Rifle, so yeah, it's a little no bit better this today. time. I got to see a show last night. It was a lot of fun. What'd you do? I went and saw uh, Jake Scott, is his name, downtown at the House of Blues. Okay. Oh, okay. It's really, that really good. Fun. We yeah. actually— Jake so, Scott, what, what genre of music is that? He's like alternative pop. It's not like a—he's like nice guy pop is the best way to you say it. You ever wondered what is the, what's the distinguishing mark? I don't even know. What, what distinguishes between pop— R and B, yeah, rap, like like like, what is the deciding factor? Most with often, that? what determines pop is, I mean, because it's popular culture. So yeah. it's, it's the number of sales and how how it's charting. I mean, because an R and B song can cross over to pop if it, it, Bieber does it all the time. Like he mm. is adamant that he's yeah. an R and B guy, but he keeps being categorized as pop, pop because he's so popular. So a lot of uh-huh. times, it's just where the song is charting, where the artist is charting. This Jake's Jake Scott, he's like a smaller artist, and he. I've I've actually known him since he was in college, not him specifically, but his music okay. since he was in college, and he was part of a completely different group. And we've just followed him. And me and the fiance really like him a lot, like from a, a music standpoint. We actually oh, saw him cool. after the show. It was kind nice. of cool. Yeah, we got to take a little selfie with him. Nice. Oh, so for reference, fun. I'm talking about Justin, not Shane. No, yeah, not mm. based not Shane right. Bieber. <laughs> mm. Good yeah. good idea. Yeah. All right, let's talk Cowboys defense versus the Lions offense. Lions come in with one of the better rated offenses statistically mm-hmm. in the NFL, but Isaiah, I know you've already watched the tape. Oh, yes, I have. Are they a, are they a fraud? Is their offense a fraud? I wouldn't say that you could be a fraud in this league six okay. games into it, you know, or five games for them. Are they as close to a fraud as you can be in this league? Then? Eh. No, I think that you just can't overlook them, just like I'm going to say every week. Okay. But I think these guys run the ball efficiently. I think they do that well. And I think that, you know, this is another one of those teams much like, I don't want to say much like, but as dedicated to the run as Philadelphia was, I would say that this team will be as dedicated to running the ball. Um, they have both of their guys, to my knowledge, back in their backfield now. Yep. And Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift. So those guys are, are both threats. You know, you got a downhill guy, you got a – you got a speedy guy, so you got a nice two-headed monster there. Now, if they're forced to throw the ball, then it's a totally different ball game because mm-hmm. Jared Goff can't be trusted. So uh, that's the reason why he's kind of been bounced around a little bit. But as, as long as they're allowed to have a running game and allowed to to lean on that to keep them in the game and maybe even keep them ahead of the game, then you have your hands full. Um, but you know, if you could force him to to start putting that ball in the air, then we all know what Jared Goff's capable of. Yeah, I don't I don't think they're a fraud. Um, I, I like what Dan Campbell has been able to do up there when it comes to that offense. Um, they're going to try to tandem the Cowboys to death between Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift. That's pretty much what they're going to try yep. to do. They're going to try to Zeke and Pollard them to death. Um, and you really want to keep an eye on DeAndre Swift because he's averaging almost 10 yards of reception. He's uh, and I, I know the guy quite well because, uh, <laughs> you know, go dogs. Oh, yeah. yeah but uh, he, he's a true dual threat in that, you know, he can he could take it up the A or B gap, but he could, you know, get those bubble screens as well. But the way the, the Lions utilize him is more so Williams is going to be the hammer, Swift is going to be uh, – the lightning so as as long as the cowboys can kind of contain that and i believe they'll have a good chance of doing so considering every week in practice who do they go against i just mentioned them ezekiel elliott and tony pollard they've seen this type of tandem every day in practice so you know leverage to the cowboys in that in that factor but um they're going to have to keep that that run game slash bubble screen game contained and if they can do that here's where uh it becomes easier against a team like the lions it's because if you force them to pass the ball, unlike some of the quarterbacks like Joe Burrow, which the Cowboys did a good job against, Tom Brady, uh, Matthew Stafford, but being able to do that against them tells me that you can most certainly do it against a guy like Jared Goff. Because if you put the game on Jared Goff's shoulders uh-uh. and he has to throw it 35 <laughs> plus times, uh-uh. you've basically won the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just looking at the stats with, with their rushing offense, they're averaging about 150 yards per game. That's yes. good for eighth in the league but that that's really impressive when you think about Swift has, has been out yep. uh, and you mentioned the bubble screens he he is such a 
He's such a great athlete with the ball in his hands. He's a he has these violent cuts where he can just on a dime yep. and get you out of your gap. And um, but I, golf is interesting because I've always thought going back to his Rams days when he's got time. This is for most quarterbacks when he's got time to set his feet, man. He can pick you apart. Um, but they're going to lean on the run. Yep. And and based on what the Cowboys have shown. If there's a weakness in this Cowboys defense, and I think we still feel like this is a really, really good Cowboys defense that has a chance to be great, um, it's this run defense. And some of it is is tactical because, and McCarthy said this a couple weeks ago, like we don't, if I was attacking this Cowboys defense, I would run on them because I don't want to mess with their pass rush. Mm-hmm. So the Cowboys have to be ready for that. This is not the same type of Eagles offense they're going to no. face with, with the running game and the RPOs and all that kind of stuff. But to no C's point, they're going to try to hammer – hammer up front on the ground second in the nfl in yards per play on the ground so yards per carry they're second so that's not just run the football run the football run the football they're getting chunk yardage over five nearly five and a half yards per carry the only team that has more yards per carry is baltimore and you know how baltimore runs the football so it's it's a little bit different but then you turn around and you talk about the way they can throw it because you you do want to put jared goff in a position where he throws the football yes a ton because he's going to make mistakes much like a lot of other quarterbacks in the league will if you're not at that elite level and Jared Goff's not there but they're still 7th in the in the NFL in passing yards per game they're ninth in the NFL in terms of yards per pass and and, and completion attempts so i i still look at it as a balanced attack but with a run heavy lean right uh, cuz they can do a little bit of both yeah, I mean it's like it's like Tennessee from you know a couple years ago. You know okay. what they what they were. You know they're gonna you know Derrick Henry's getting the ball every freaking time, yeah. but Tannehill's gonna throw it around he can too. Still throw he, it. Yeah, he can still throw it. So no team's gonna come in here and just go straight wishbone on you. But these guys, you know, they want to hurt you. They they want to physically impose their will. I mean that comes from their head coach. Obviously, he's a mammoth human being and he has that grit about him. I mean obviously Dallas fans should, should know him very well. Uh, and this guy, you know, he's going to be all jacked up on, on his uh, Black Rifle coffee. You know, like, I think he, he drinks about 12 cups a day, somewhere around there. So, I mean, these guys, yeah. The one thing that he wants to to walk away every game knowing is that you impose your will on that on the other team. I mean, he obviously hasn't won a lot of games to date, but I think every team that he's faced has said this team is physical, this team plays hard. Right? They're going to bite somebody's kneecaps off. Yeah, they're going to bite their kneecaps off, like he says. So, Thanks, Dan. So effort, the effort's never a question, and those are the teams that are, are really dangerous because you can't take any time off, and you can't allow for them to stay remotely close score-wise because they will freaking do something with one of their explosive players, right? especially Swift. You just talked about his ability to put his foot in the ground and get vertical. If you let this game remain close, this is one of those teams that can that can definitely bite your kneecaps off. So 35 <laughs> points, 35 points and a three-point loss against Philadelphia. 24 points and a four-point loss against Minnesota. Those are both teams with winning records and have had a lot of success in 2022. Their only win came against Washington, and then they lost by three, but put up 45 on a not-so-good Seattle team. That Seattle defense is not very good. But then they go up against the Patriots. Yeah. Uh, Then you go up against the Patriots, and the Patriots have their number with Bailey Zappi at quarterback. I mean, they turn around, they put up 29 on them, and, and... Put up a big old goose egg. So goose egg. They, no, that was maybe Belichick. You know, he's faced golf in the Super Bowl before. Yeah, yeah. Belichick's but, great at putting a game plan together. But here's the, here's the beauty of it, and and we say this, and we all know it to be true. Just because you have a blueprint doesn't mean you have the tools to to build what the previous person or team was able to build. Um, but the Cowboys have the, the blueprint on how to shut down the Detroit Lions. They just got it from Bill Belichick a couple weeks ago, and they have the tools and personnel. So you utilize that blueprint. What is the blueprint? Shrink the game. Okay. Right? You shrink the game and you force Jared Goff to test you down the field. And if you do that, then you're going to win the game. This Jared Goff only has 11 touchdowns over his first five games. That's averaging, what, 2.2, if my math is correct? Mm-hmm. 2.2 per game. That's that's a very winnable game. If if you you can give him those two touchdowns, and if in fact Dak Prescott is back in the fold, and we're not saying Dak Prescott is going to hit the ground running and be in prime form, but if Dak Prescott is back on Sunday, it does give you better arm talent. So you still want to lean on your run game, um, but your offense with Dak Prescott should be able to score more than two touchdowns. We know week one, but we'll we'll treat week one as an aberration. <laughs> given his to- the totality of his career. But assume that your offense can put up more than two touchdowns. Jared Goff is not going to light up the scoreboard. Jared Goff also has four interceptions to those 11 touchdowns. That's almost half 
So half of the time that he throws touchdowns, he's throwing an interception. He's going to cough up the ball. We've seen over the course of his career, Kyle, Rob, Isaiah, if you make him panic in the pocket, yeah. you know, Burger King hands is going to give you the ball. <laughs> do, you, do, you feel, <laughs> do you guys feel confident loading the box and letting your DBs handle their their, their yes. receivers? Yes. Yeah, I do, actually. I do. do you? Yes. I do. St. Yeah. Brown's a problem. St. Brown's a problem, and I think Hawkinson's a problem. They're both Hawkinson too. good. Yeah. But, I, I mean, we've talked about it in the past. J. Ron Curse can eliminate tight ends. Yes. And yeah, we he haven't, did so yeah, we haven't had a, Yeah, there hasn't been a tight end that's that's worn us out. And we've played against some really good tight ends today. Yeah, and the, the tight ends have not had their same no. kind of success as they have in the past. Facts. I mean, last year and even the year before that, tight ends, good tight ends, had their way until mm-hmm. really J. Ron Curse midway through last year kind of took that off of no, the plate I mean, of think the about, defense. Think about the tight ends that Dallas has faced this year. They've pretty much been shut down. I mean, these are yeah. some of the better tight ends in the league. So, I mean, kudos to kudos to that. See, I, but in, then you then you rank up Amon Ross St. Brown, who I really do like as a young wide receiving prospect. I think he's going to be really good by the time his career is over with. He's going to have a long career in the league. I think he's going to have a, a solid, solid career. However, you don't put him next to the Mike Evans and the Jamar Chases and the A.J. Browns that you've already faced this season. Even Terry McLaurin. I wouldn't even put him on Russ St. Brown right there with Terry McLaurin. I still feel like this wide receiving unit as a whole is not as stout as what the Dallas Cowboys have faced at this point in the 100% season. 100% agree. And, and whatever variation, if you're running man and, and you see a situation, or man or zone, doesn't matter. If you see Josh Reynolds up against Trevon Diggs, I'm taking Diggs in that matchup. If you see St. Brown up against Diggs, I'm taking Diggs in that matchup. If you see either one of those receivers up against Anthony Brown, I'm taking Anthony Brown in that matchup. And then it goes to the tight end, Hawkinson. Okay, I'm taking Curse in that matchup. So you're taking away uh, the the targets for Jared Goff. And, again, if you can successfully contain Swift on those bubble screens and eliminate him as a a passing threat out of the backfield, now it's truly a one-dimensional game. And then if you can be it by defensive uh, scoring and or offensive scoring and or a special teams touchdown, if you can then make the the scoreboard apply more pressure to Jared Goff and make him play hero ball – uh, and the, that, there you go. I mean, it's playing right into your hands. If you're I, I don't disagree with you. I think the one thing that's that's being underestimated, though, is these guys' ability to get the ball into Hawkinson's hand, to get the ball into St. Brown's hand, and then actually have yards after the catch. Mm-hmm. These yeah, guys, they the yak because these guys over right. both of those both of those guys, the tight end and the receiver, over half of their yards that they've accumulated this year have come in the form of yak. Yeah. So these guys are okay taking the ball underneath the coverage. And then making something happen with it. And that's the danger. Even when you are able to stay in front of these guys is their ability to make big plays after they have the high-precision catch. And really quickly, yeah. uh, to that point, I, you're right. And Yak is always going to be dangerous. And you have to be concerned with it uh, against the Cowboys' defense because they like to bend, don't break. Yeah. But what's promising is Dallas Goddard, huge Yak guy. Had only 22 total yards last week. Oh, yeah, so. for sure. Yeah, like, got to tackle better, right? Yes. Miss, missing 10 tackles against the Eagles. If you look at the Cowboys' defensive stats, the one area where they're not in the top basically 5 or 10 tackling. is tackling. And then you also look at the rush defense where they're 19th. And I just – 120.7, unique challenge last week against Philly. But, like, how – is it alarming this run defense right now, or do you, or, or is it a product yes. of how good they are in other aspects of their defense? I think it's alarming. Yeah, I think it's, I think for teams that are hell bent on running the ball, it's alarming because, I, and you can say this about any team, any team that has a, the capabilities of running the ball, you can easily forget about the receivers, much like we talked about with Philadelphia. These guys are very much so in the same sense. You know these guys are going to come in and run the ball. So it's like, okay, you load the box up. Okay, but if you load the box up, you better be pressed up on the outside and man-to-man, and these guys haven't – Dallas has not played very well in man-to-man coverage this year. They just haven't. Even though they have the talent at the defensive back position, they've given up a lot of plays when they're playing man coverage. And you can go back and watch the film. It doesn't necessarily feel that way until you start looking at it. And you're like, dang, what coverage – how do you catch that ball? Man, how do you catch that ball? Man. You know what I'm saying? We talk about the big play for Cooper Cup. He was held up most of the time. And then what? Man. Right? So, you know, so you think about some of those plays and you think about a team like Detroit that can – you don't come off – you don't jump off the tape as you've given them a bunch of respect. But when you look at what they've done, 
They've put up way more points than the Cowboys have put up this year. When you look at what they've done, yeah. their yak yardage is right there. When you look at what they've done, they've ran the ball pretty doggone well. So you got to put some respect on these guys, and you better walk in there and be sure that you're tackling. And if you, deser- if you decide to load the box up, you better be sure that you can get in these guys' hip pocket and prevent them from getting, getting the ball in their hands. I'll tweet this stat out. Uh, it's a, a chart from Next Gen Stats, and I was just looking up Jared Goff and, and looking how he is down the field. It's actually not as bad as you think downfield as a lot of other other quarterbacks in the league. I mean, over 10 yards, he is right at the league average. He's not anything worse. He's not anything better. He's not going to light the world on fire, but he's not below average. Like uh, That's the biggest thing. And then right around 10 yards from scrimmage, he is above average. And and, and in, he is one of the best in the NFL of doing so. And then you look at his stat line, there's only been one game this season where he has not thrown over 35 times. And that one game was the game that they won. Mm. So I'm right there with Patrick and saying, the 35. get him to 35, sure. make him throw the football a little bit. He's going to be making a mistake. He's thrown four of his interceptions in four different games. Yep. So all four of his interceptions have come at different opportunities, and it's given the ball back to a defense that could definitely take it away, Rob. Yeah, and he's and he's not the most mobile guy in the world either. That's why I say going, going back to his Rams days when he had great protection, he's a very accurate guy. But I think you guys nailed it though. Like yeah. you, you get him having to shuffle around a little bit, and you can make things happen. That's where I, this is. There's an opportunity for for this Cowboys pass rush to get him off his game a little bit. Thanks. I'm interested about this Isaiah because you not only is Detroit coming off of a bye week. But they're coming off of a bye week after they got smacked by the Patriots. I mean, they got smoking a pancake. Yep. So (laughs) usually if you get smacked in the NFL, you're like, oh, yeah, let's get right back into it. A week of preparation and then let's try and turn that thing around. Now you got to sit on it and chew on it for two weeks yeah. before you get right back at it. What kind of psychological effect does that have on a team and a player? Well, they're they're cows. They got an opportunity to chew on it, swallow it, and spit it back up and chew it again. <laughs> Howdy! God, I'm gonna miss this show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and it's that's, that's, that's almost more dangerous, Kyle. Okay. It's more dangerous because now you're giving a team two weeks to prepare for you. It's no different than like loading up for the first game of the season. You have that's the most prepared you will ever be for an opponent. And for Dallas coming off of a loss, I don't think it helps them in that regard because obviously Detroit was back there doing all their studying, the QC guys, all their scouts are studying up all the things that the Dallas pass rush does and how they're creating pressure. How can they keep this pass rush off of Jared Goff? And then it's like, okay, crap. Oh, they lost to Philadelphia? Shoot, what did Philadelphia do, right? You know, so, so now they're looking at Philadelphia film and trying to figure out, okay, let's add this to the game plan. So this is the most prepared that Detroit will ever be for a game. Just got to see what happens now. Okay. And, and I think it's interesting because you talk about Jerry Goff and and we talk about Yak and all of this obviously plays into each other, but it circles back to tackling. The Cowboys have to make sure that they are disciplined in their tackling. They're not over aggressive. Just do your job, get the man down, eliminate as much Yak as possible because Jerry Goff, he, he only has, what, 1,355 passing yards mm. this season. Literally 49, let's round it up, 50% of those are attributable to Yak, right? So 668 yards of his passing yards this year have come from his receivers and his tight end getting the yards after the catch. So goes to Kyle's point, Jared Goff is probably going to get plenty of those check down Charlies, right? But if you stop the guy right Mm -hmm. there... You're you're going to save yourself from keeping from has, losing the time of possession battle like you did in Philadelphia. Has Dallas shown that they can tackle them? I've seen I've seen that's the that's the question. You know what I'm saying? I think our guys are flying around, but as of late, the last two games, as of really late, they're saying. diving yeah. with their eyes closed. Seemingly, say, as of late, you're both right. As of yeah. late, not so much. Yeah. But it's also true that on I, I want to say at least two occasions, two different outings this this uh, season, I have seen them tackle exceedingly well. So I've seen that they have the ability to. Yeah, they just kind of got sure. away from it, and it could have been emotions. We talked about getting overhyped. Mm-hmm. Maybe they got overhyped for the Maybe. Eagles and you know you over pursue and yep. then guess what? Miss tackle. A couple of guys said that uh, Micah said it, um, trying to make the big splash play because you know everybody wants to eat. This is a great defense. You've talked about this. Everybody wants to get in on the action and it is it was a huge game. And so just kind of settle into your assignments a little bit more because they've got the yeah. talent to do it obviously. Yep. All right. When we come back here on Talking Cowboys presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company, we're going to hear Rob Phillips' favorite Mickey Spagnola story. Mm. That's it. The, the, the origin story of Rob Phillips and his favorite memory from Talking Cowboys when we come back with more right after this. 
Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. <laughs> but the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Black Rifle Coffee Company serves premium coffee to people who love America. When you drink Black Rifle Coffee, you are directly supporting veterans, law enforcement, and first responders in your community. Black Rifle's expert roasters love coffee almost as much as Texas loves football, so it makes sense that America's Coffee partnered with America's team. Go online at BlackRifleCoffee.com and fuel up with the official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys. That's BlackRifleCoffee.com to fuel up today. This sweet. Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Little Sweet says head on home. Dr. Pepper is on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Back to Talkin' Cowboys. Head to AT&T Stadium on Saturday, October 22nd to experience Rally Day presented by SeatGeek and get ready to cheer on your Dallas Cowboys with tours of AT&T Stadium, ticket giveaways, games, inflatables, and a whole lot more. Visit attstadium.com slash rally days for tickets and for more information. What are, you, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, folks. What is going on? You don't want to know, you man. You want to know. I am all out of the loop. I was have out of the room for 30 seconds. Have you ever seen Blue Streak? Oh, no. Okay, you have homework <laughs> to do. <laughs> I got to do some you homework. Have, <laughs> you have homework. Okay, I'll go do my homework. Patrick Nosey, Walker, Isaiah, stand back. Chris Beam in the back. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Rob? Phillips in his final show at Talking Cowboys today. Rob P. Island. Rob, Rob P. Phillips. Island, baby. I'm on an island. Mm. On my own. Mm. On my own. <laughs> All on my own. Yeah. Till again. <laughs> they can smell fresh cash. Oh, yeah. Man. Oh, man. That's why he's right. leaving. There you go. You can smell fresh cash. I don't blame him, honestly. <laughs> I, feel I, I feel you. Uh, all right. I want to hear the origin story. You started as an intern back in 03. Yeah. Mm. Did you? When did you start? How did you get here? And and why was Mickey the one that made the decision? <laughs> <laughs> Who would give Mickey that power? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Mickey was uh, Mickey was doing a lot of hits on local radio. So I just uh, I think I just emailed him. The Twitter wasn't a thing. Um, texting certainly wasn't a thing. AOL instant yeah. message. I just emailed like him and said uh, you need an intern for the summer. So you want to work here, nice. huh? You want to you want to be a Cowboys writer, huh? <laughs> um, so yeah, I met him, and I, I don't I don't remember anything about it other than I, I met Derek and Nick and Jerry Jr. and, and you know, the rest is history. They, they, my first season here full time, they had, Chris remembers this, they had, it was a local Cowboys network before NFL network. Yeah. And they had me on like a little, literally probably what my daughter does at school right now, a little daycare like <laughs> style table in the corner where I would read emails like PTI, like stat boy. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah. So I was, I was off of the kitty table for a while there. <laughs> I think Mickey did I think that. It was on Cowboys Daily or something like that. Yeah, it, it was, was what, it was like it a was, daily. It, it was it was talking Cowboys, but it was, it was a TV show. Yeah, it was a TV show with, in the morning with Mickey and Bill yep. Jones. Yep. And uh so I started there. And with the, a Cowboys the Network. Cowboys Network that lasted a year or two, something like that. So you were you've been on Talking Cowboys 
since the beginning. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. Is since rebirth. it originated. They didn't yes. let me talk at first. But you were there. Yeah, yeah, but I was there. So you were thinking Cowboys. I was thinking. You couldn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> Cowboys. I was reading Cowboys right. emails and saying, hey, Bill, this is a good email. You might want to read this. Oh, yeah. man, that's outstanding. Going so going back almost 20 years. So 20 years of, I mean, yeah, almost 20 years, 17, right? Yeah. Total. I think. I don't know. Yeah, whatever yeah. it would be. Yeah. But. Of talking Cowboys, yeah. and I mean, you've been you you left for a little bit, and you came back. And how long has it been since you came back? Came back in fifteen. Okay, yeah. So it's eight years. It, I mean, that's flown by, flown by. And uh, I, you asked me before the show my favorite memories. Mm-hmm. I would say one, Jerry's Hall of Fame party. I felt like Owen Wilson crashing a wedding. I had no business being there. I think. <laughs> That was amazing. Uh, but so many things, so many projects. The mental health project that Isaiah helped us out on yeah. uh, meant a lot to me personally, the Deep Blue. I just, the relationships, the relationships, because Pat hit on it perfectly. Like, this is not a normal job. This is, yeah. we spend way more time at times with, with our, our teammates than we do our own families. Yep. And so teamwork is, it, it sounds cheesy, but it's so important. And I would say I had a huge group at my wedding in 2016, um, Chris and, I'm not going to be Hellman. Hellman in June tried to thank everybody he's ever worked with, and, I, and he failed miserably because he left me out. And I'm like his brother up here. He left me out too. So, so yeah, that's cool. so I can't. I can't. So do you're that. leave him out right now. I, I, mean, no, I mentioned him just now, but everybody. I mentioned Derek and Nick, obviously, and Mickey, and upstairs William and Amber and Kay and Nikki and Kurt. I, I, I'm not going to name everybody, but the team means so much to me. This this is home for me. It will always be home home to me so So when hellman left back in the summer i i texted him and i was like it's like having your your older brother leave for college that's what it felt like for me yeah because hellman was that older brother to me rob leaving it feels like my dad is (laughs) my work dad is going walking out the door like how old does that make me feel right now (laughs) but that's not i mean i'm not that much older i'm gonna put him in the uncle rico category myself But that's the type we, of role we, model you've been. It's not because of your age. It's because of the role model that you've been and the professionalism that you've had. I mean, I, I, I've i always looked up to you. When I got here and I was running the podcast in 2019, I remember watching you come in here and deal with Mickey and brought us on a day-to-day basis. Oh, Brian's another one. Brian's taught me so much, man. And he's Kate fantastic, Harrison. too. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you can't forget about Nick Eatman, either. I mean, Nick Eatman's a huge um, part of that Nick's as well. Hired me and, t- helped hired me twice. But that's Nick's, Nick's my guy. That's what's it's so tough about this one, is, is uh, Hellman leaving and then, uh, and then you leaving, and now uh, but, it's... But that's part of the teamwork that, like, we lived together, roomed together, yeah. and and Pat was there too, and I, IRS was there too. But we, you know, I never made you turn out the lights. I like dad, like curfew <laughs> upstairs. Hey, get, it, get, but get down. if anything, the TV to was the, going to the ceiling. Right, Keep it right, down right. right. There. Lights out, lights out, Kyle. I never did that, but no, that's what didn't. we're talking about. That's why this is so important. Speaking you know? of Nick Eatman, mm. we've got our very Nick own Nick oh, Eatman with a nice man. presentation. Ooh, look at that. That's nice. Thank you, man. Welcome to the show, Nick. What's up, guys? I've never been on Talking Cowboys. Well, welcome, sir. Yeah. Ever? I don't think so. A talking Cowboys break, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah joint, like a little yeah. joint shows that joint we do. Edition. I've been hustling this morning, man, getting some of these. <laughs> Ooh, you got the Phillips on the back, too? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, look at that. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That is special. Is it? Wait, it's got it on the back? Yeah. That's it's cool. written. Ooh, this is, that's cool. This is, that is, this is cool. John Phillips' helmet from 2009. No, <laughs> I'm kidding because it's got. No, no, it's not. Oh, no. man, that's great. You guys telling some stories here? Yeah. yeah. What, yeah. You, got? what, what you, you got? Well, they're trying to. Trying to ask me like what my first meeting with Mickey because I interviewed with Mickey and then Derek and then Jerry Jr. and I don't remember anything of it. You met with Jerry Jr. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> three. Well, I've got you got your story. And how you well, yeah, it. but but yeah, I didn't know I didn't know we were meeting with with Junior. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't have any. I mean, I have great Rob stories, but I don't know. Yeah, sure. I can't. It's one of those things where you <laughs> no, don't know which one to bring out in yeah, this moment. Yeah, this is definitely Tell him about a, the time he went streaking down the quad. <laughs> the gymnasium. The gymnasium. <laughs> no, you've got some. You, he's got classic one-liners that are just. I mean, that's the, why. That's why me and, and Isaiah and Pat have hit it off. One reason yeah. is just because we can quote movies. movies like right. They are. The same. Yeah. Kyle's, the same movies. Kyle's getting there. He's just a little trying. younger. Yeah. 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 I've it's got like, a smaller window of opportunity right. to hit those quotes. Right. You've got to see Major League or, oh, or yeah. Wedding Crashers or yeah. Old School. You got to have. You got to have that. I've got yeah. all three of those, so that's good. Blue yeah. Streak is the Blue, Blue Streak's the next one. Okay, I yeah. got to get Blue Streak. I mean, I just gave Rob a. 
<laughs> what was that? A Days of Thunder line? Days of Thunder. Yeah. That's a great movie. Just because we were talking about what was it? We were talking about Cooper Rush and and Dak here and how they don't hate each other. You know, I was like, yeah, this isn't. This isn't uh, what's the guy's name? The uh, I had it. Um, the, the guy Russ Wheeler. Russ Wheeler. This isn't Russ Wheeler coming in to take a spot. You know, at the end. I mean, they, they they're friends. They're they're good. So yeah, yeah for sure. So this is tough. so how did he break the news? First show. First news second. and notes. Yeah. Rob so, just let it come out. Rob, well, we it's normally Kyle's start. Idea. Yeah, we yeah. normally start the show with news and notes with Rob. So Rob always starts the show, and we kind of run down what's going on with everything over the first. 10 minutes mm-hmm. of the show, and then we kind of take that take that conversation into whatever it, it may lead to. So we just had him give the last news and note as <laughs> the big one. I'm out. And then Kyle Here I go. Him, then Kyle called him dad. I did call yeah. him dad. I'm his work dad, Fajan. apparently. I never knew that. Yeah. Fajan. <laughs> Fajan. Nick's probably Shmoke like, wait, I'm his work dad. Wait a second, yeah. Nick's yeah. like, wait, What's I Mickey? thought I was... <laughs> Oh, oh man! Oh, no. oh, well, I I, I I know this. Hi, Grandpa. This right here. This is set. Stop for me. <laughs> this is set for Mickey right here. Like like this. You'd hurt your back trying to do this the whole Sorry, time. Nick. So, oh Matt, man, time I'll, has I'll flown say, by when you've been compared to somebody's father. You know, mm, that's, yeah. That time is flown. You by are a you. father. Well, I know, but not yours. <laughs> no, correct. you're not my it's dad. Fine. But it's, fine. Fine. it's not what he was aiming for. It's yeah. not what yeah. I was yeah. aiming for. You're like 26 years old, bro. Yeah. I was trying to say as a role model. Yeah. Don't let that line go away. Like don't don't let that just go through the you cracks. Like, you're a father. Yeah. yeah, I know, but not yours. Yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate that. I appreciate the let statement, me man. let me say this. Rob's and, the peppy, and I've got some. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the peppy. Rob's the peppy. <laughs> I'm the peppy. Oh, oh man, God. y'all have fun on this show. No, a lot of a lot of good stuff here. There's more signatures to come. Not everybody. Uh, got it. All the important people, though, have. Mm. <clears throat> I say. Mm. Um, sorry, I'm kidding. No, uh, but I'll say this though. Stinks the nostrils. I'll say that. And I said this to you before. I, I think it's been written on here a couple times about being a teammate. Mm. You're not going to find a better teammate, and you guys know it by being on the show. I've known it for for so long, and and you know, I don't call you a coworker. I call you a friend. I, you've been outstanding to work with and it, it's just they don't make them like you anymore I, I can promise you that so it's going to be tough it's going to be impossible to replace you no, uh, but they they do because I, the guys in this room right here are great teammates yeah. we have a great group like we're we're good you know that's yeah. why I feel I told I told the guys on the top of the show it's hard to leave right now mm-hmm. middle of the season it's not easy but but we got such a great group so everybody's going to be fine we're going to do great and I say we because I still feel like I'm here. That's well, you are. So, You're here. You know. WWRD. There you go. What would Rob do? Thank mm. you, sir. <laughs> uh, if they win the Super Bowl, do you get a ring? Mm. <laughs> I'm going to leave, and they're going to go on this huge, massive run. <laughs> I just feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Yeah. Rob's going to be I still have my badge. I my badge. <laughs> Nose pressed up against the window. Oh, yeah. goodness. Yeah. Well, hopefully that is the case. I mean, yeah, not, man. I mean, I, I want you all to experience everybody wants that, that, man. It's, yeah, you guys work too hard. Yeah. You know, I hope yeah. it's a great run. Rob, it's it's been so much fun. Nick, thanks for coming yeah. in and, and presenting the helmet. We love the, the helmet. Yeah, it's man. a sweet helmet, yeah, by the way. Sweet. This that is the one that they're going to wear later in the year. It's not the throwback, white, but, it's but it's the, the white. white with the That's, actual star. Uh, That's a nice, slick helmet. Mine's is. that I have at home. is not white like that mm, anymore. It's yeah. pretty much I yellow. wanted the traditional <laughs> one, <laughs> but this is what they had. I think this one's cooler. Yeah, so uh, yeah. I like it a lot. All I'm right. going to have to go find it at the pro shop. But that's going to do it here for us on Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. We'll see you tomorrow. We're going to preview the Cowboys offense versus that Lions defense and give you a whole lot more. One more time. One more time, baby. For Chris Beam, for Nick Eatman, for Isaiah Stanback, Patrick Nosey Walker, I'm Kyle Yeomans, and of course for Rob P. Island, I'm Kyle Yeomans saying so long from Talking Cowboys. We'll see you tomorrow. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!